Well, hey guys, Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, toolsandtime.com. Welcome back. Today we're going to revisit the Chevy Tahoe 5.7 with the relay issue. The truck's been running great. However, like I mentioned at the end of the last video, I would like to go back and revisit that oil pressure switch to make sure it's working correctly before I return it back to service. So, let's get in there and see what we got. First thing I'm going to do is fire it up, unplug the relay, and see if it stays running. See it drop dead. Hear your fuel pump kick on right away. Just timed out. Alright, let's see what's going on. Let's take a minute and review this wiring schematic one more time before we move ahead too much further. As you can see, this is the fuel pump oil pressure switch. It shares the same power source as the fuel pump relay that goes up to that main fuse, which we know is good because we checked that in the previous video. So if everything worked working correctly, it would switch over and go to this gray conductor, which would go straight down to the fuel pump and allow it to run as long as there's oil pressure even if the fuel pump relay fails. So this tan wire goes up to your oil pressure gauge. Okay, so the next thing I would do is make sure I have the correct control voltage and everything going to the pressure switch. So you want to unplug it. As you see, I have it unplugged. I got the air cleaner removed to give me better access. And I got the pressure switch. And if you remember, by looking at the wire schematic, it should be this orange wire. As you can see we have control voltage. So let me see if the fuel pump kicks on when I install the jumper. So go back to the schematic and you can see it's the orange and the gray wire. The brown one's for your your pressure gauge. Let's take and install the jumper and see if the pump kicks on. Yep, fuel pump kicked on. Okay, so that's telling me that that oil pressure slash fuel pump switch isn't working correctly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go pick up a new one. I'll come back and we're going to bench test that new one to see how it operates. And we'll take it from there. Okay guys, I just got back from the parts store. I got the new pressure switch. And now I'm going to show you how to do a simple bench test. So I can show you how it operates, and plus I'll be making sure the switch works correctly before I install it onto the vehicle. So what I'm going to do, after looking at the wire diagram and inspecting the wiring on the vehicle, I determine it's the two outer terminals that are connected to the contacts on the inside of the switch that are going to close somewhere between 3 to 7 PSI, give or take. So what I'm going to do to be performing this test, as you can see, i got an air regulator. I'll be taking this pressure switch, screwing it into the air regulator, hooking compressed air up to this side of the regulator. This regulator could go anywhere from 0 PSI, from nothing, up to 100. But like I mentioned, we only have to go up to 10 at the most. So, the next step, before I go hooking compressed air up to that, is I got my multimeter. I'll be setting this to continuity. Okay, so when the contacts close, the circuit will become continuous. There will be a continuous loop. Therefore, the contacts will close. The current will flow from one terminal to the other. And you'll hear that audible signal on my multimeter. So let's go ahead and perform this test. Hopefully you can see what I got here. I got the compressed air hooked up to the regulator. Right now it's turned all the way down. It's back all the way down to zero PSI. I got my alligator clips hooked onto the pressure switch. I'm going to take and hook up my multimeter. It's set up to continuity. So, what this is going to act like is oil pressure, except for I'm going to be using air pressure. So, by the time that it's, it's hard to read this gauge because it's 0 to 160 psi. 
However, that first line represents somewhere around 5 PSI. So by the time it hits that first line, I'm saying those contacts should close and you'll hear the audible signal on the multimeter. Let's give it a shot. Okay, the gauge is just starting to come off the pin. Not quite five. And as you see right there, it was about four PSI and the contacts closed. So this switch is working correctly. Every time right around three to four PSI, it's kicking in, closing the contacts. It's come down right behind the distributor. And you can see that's where that oil pressure switch is located. Okay guys, I'm back over at the bench. I got the old pressure switch removed from the vehicle. It wasn't too bad to remove. It does require a special socket. However, if you have an inch and an eighth open end wrench, you can reach down there and break it loose or a pair of channel locks or some means of grabbing a hold of this nut, breaking it loose, and then you can reach down and simply unscrew it by hand. It's an NPT, it's a pipe thread, so it's a taper style thread. So once you break it loose, it'll get easier as it goes. So. Let's bench test this one and see what we got. Okay. Got to hook up to the two outer terminals just like before. Install the meter. Got it set on continuity. So let's see what we got. Okay, I'm just starting to lead the pin. Okay, I'm at five. There's ten. There's twenty. And as you can see, the contacts still haven't closed, or if they did close, they're shot. So this switch definitely is faulty. So let's go and uh, install the new switch and see what happens. Before installing the new switch, you're going to apply some thread compound onto the threads. The last thing you need is it to leak and create another issue after you fix one. So let's install. Okay, as you can see, I got the new switch installed. The harness is plugged back in. Let's do a couple checks. Okay, I got everything buttoned up after reinstalling the switch. As you can see, the air cleaner is back on it. I'm feeling pretty confident about the repair since we bench test everything. So I'm going to reinstall the relay and let's see if it fires up. Much more comfortable about returning this one back to the customer. We do all our troubleshooting, check the entire circuit, everything's back up to the snuff, so you should be good to go. Alright, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please subscribe. I'm Will Robinson from Robinson's Auto, toolsandtime.com. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.